Moscovich was born into a wealthy Anglo-Irish family and had a privileged upbringing. Growing up, she watched her parents help people who weren't as fortunate and those who came from a difficult background. She's always had a close relationship with her sister. Constance had a great gift for painting, hence she studied at an art school. At her time there, she created a women's suffrage group. Moscovich was a passionate feminist who was determined to fight for women's rights. To pursue her studies, Constance moved to Paris, where she married an artist from a wealthy Polish family. Once she settled down, she participated in several parties, fighting for change in the way that Ireland is governed, particularly because people wanted Irish independence from Britain. Her work revolved around advocating for workers and trade unions and setting up soup kitchens to feed striking workers, protesting about poor working conditions. Now that you've caught up, she's been arrested on several occasions. One of them was due to her involvement in the Easter Rising. She participated in a youth group named Fianna. And she fought as a soldier during the Rising. This wasn't any ordinary youth group, as there were a vicious armed group of radical rebels who did gun running. It got so bad that Britain troops were sent to put a stop to this opposition. It took six days of fighting for the rebels to surrender. She was sentenced to death. However, since she's a woman, they changed it to life imprisonment. Therefore, she served 14 months in prison before being released. Now, you're probably wondering what happened after she had been released. Firstly, she became the leader of an Irish women's parliamentary military group. Although, she was arrested again in 1918 for revolutionary activities. Even though she was in prison, Constance George was the first woman to be elected to the House of Commons in 1918, though she refused to take her seat. Instead, she joined other Sinn Féin's MPs in setting up the first separate Irish Parliament where she became Minister for Labour. This is the first female cabinet minister in Europe. Unfortunately, a year later, in 1919, she served four months in prison for making rebellious speeches. This doesn't end there. She then left government in protest at the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty, which created the Irish Free State, but also led to the creation of Northern Ireland. After her release, she continued to be involved in Republican activity, writing pamphlets and making speeches, but she also worked extensively with the poor living in residence housing in Dublin. She fought in the Irish Civil War and returned to politics in 1923, where she was arrested once again, making her go on hunger strike. Unfortunately, Margaret died in July 1927 and died as a poor person. Thousands lined the streets of Dublin for her funeral procession, 